This is just a quick video on my Cummins powered Land Rover. It's a 5.9 litre 6BT out of a DAF 45 lorry. It's coupled with the DAF gearbox which is a ZF S542 which is then coupled to the Land Rover transfer case via an adapter kit by Reese Myers. <coughs> the engine itself um, came from the lorry with about 200,000 miles on it. I rebuilt it and put it in the Land Rover I haven't really had it any problems with that. Um, the turbo is an HX35W that's off a 210 P-pumped 6BT or off a C-series, an 83. Um, basically to put it in the Land Rover there wasn't much cutting. Reese does an adapter kit with some engine mounts which are down in there, I don't actually know, I can sort of see them. Probably need a coat of paint on them. Um, Basically mounting it in straight forward. There's a notch to be taken out of the bulkhead. This is on a TD5 Defender. There's a notch there in the uh, driver's side footwell to be taken out for the starter motor. Um, the exhaust is fairly straightforward. It's just routed down near the engine mount, turns, runs along, and then I'll show you it later on, but it zigzags across in, at the transfer box. Uh, I used a Discovery 2 TD5 radiator. I see there's a lot of guys saying that you need a bigger radiator, but that's really not the case. I use this for towing and off-roading. I don't really have it over 90 degrees hardly anywhere. There's two SPAL 12-inch fans on the back of it, high-flow fans, and when they kick in, the temperature drops pretty quick. Um, Reese did an uh, alternator bracket, which also incorporates a lower water outlet. Um, it came out straight forwards, which probably works well for like a 2.5 NA radiator, but for a TD5 I ended up having to cut it at 45 degrees um, and pipe it into the bottom of the radiator. The top hose is fairly straightforward. There's a temperature sensor in there to turn the fans on and off. Um, the header tank basically mounted over there. Um, pipe runs down all the way down to the bottom for filling up. There's a breather hose on the top of the TD5 radiators, which runs cross and back up into here and um, the heater matrix is a big big debate always on the Cummins Land Rover group on Facebook if you're not on it and you're thinking about doing one of these conversions you should basically I have mine on the closed side of the thermostat so whenever the thermostat's closed it's feeding the heater matrix then the heater matrix feeds out goes into just below the header tank there there's a T goes in there and then basically the water pump is drawn circular flow from the header tank back down and up around the heater matrix and then when it opens obviously it just bypasses that but that works really well if you use what comes on the DAF lorry which is a port here and a port here basically from plumbing your heater matrix in you'll get very little flow because you're just relying on the pressure difference between that side and it's not really that much especially when the thermostat opens so um, basically I'm running the compressor, um, Land Rover's an air suspension, so I'm running a, the DAF45 compressor. This is the regulator uh, valve port, if you want to call it that. Basically whenever the D2 governor valve opens up, it sends pressure to here, that pushes the intake valve down on the compressor. Causes it to make no compression whatsoever, it just huffs. Um, basically then I'm running a double coupling and a hydraulic line. I've been running this for like 10,000 miles. I have no problems. Um, we intake off, I think it's actually off a of Volvo lorry. Um, that's a wee our intake suppressor sensor. It works really well. Um, power steering pump in the lorries is basically, I think, I can't remember what the pressure is, but it's quite high. So uh, you can get a reduction uh, spring to drop the pressure down and basically just feeding the high pressure side of the pump into the Land Rover steering box and running a normal Land Rover reservoir. Works fine. Uh, pipes run down just in front of the engine. They're very close to the dampener pulley. Um, I've them tied up quite well and have a wee plate over them just in case the engine moves forward under braking. So, moving on, this particular Land Rover I have it on our suspension. So, it's actually sitting on daft bus bags. Um, kind of see them in there. So it's running on a uh, couple some bags from a daft bus. Save me having to work out what spring rates and what that I need for Cummins. Also in here you can see kind of the sump is spun backwards. You need a reverse sump pickup pipe to spin the standard lorry sump and spin it backwards to 
fit the Cummins into the Land Rover. You can see though it's still quite tight to the pumpkin of the Land Rover diff. So then basically in and around the driver's side footwell. Try and show you. This is the cutout that needed to be made down here. It's basically a wee notch, triangular piece, flat piece, flat piece, dead straight forward to make. Not too difficult. Um, once that's done, then you have to make your own transmission tunnel. Um, I basically made mine out of one of the plastic R380 tunnels and cut it in half, widened it by about 100 mil, refitted it. Um, then I used again, myself and Reese were working on the uh, pneumatic. Uh, high low and diff lock kit it works really well actually I have a wee switch here that turns it on and off just so that you can't accidentally hit them um, down here when you widen that tunnel it the handbrake just wasn't going to work the standard Land Rover handbrake so what I actually used was a discovery handbrake and just basically put it in there this thing hasn't been cleaned so you'll excuse the mess um, yeah and in here I have a few extra gauges I got this off I think it's RCA, RDX Defender Outfitters doubled in center console and I'm actually in the process of making a wee plate for this and then that's the airlift controller for the air suspension the rest of it's pretty much standard Land Rover interior I um, haven't done really much there um, diffs and axles are all standard Land Rover units with Ashcroft beefed up bits running a 4 pin front diff and an Ashcroft LSD in the rear Again, probably been running that for about 10,000 miles, haven't had any problems, and I give it death like. It's a bit bogging underneath, it hasn't been washed, but yeah, there's nothing special there. So I'll just fire this thing up, get it back, lift it up, and we'll get a look underneath it. Still haven't got my belt squill sorted. There it goes. Oh yes. You can't resist that, so lift this thing up. So still running the air assisted clutch. I think this is one of the real benefits, if I'm honest, of having the air suspension. It's uh, nice to drop down, but for working on it, you can lower it down to climb up in there and set valves or whatever you need to do over the top of the engine. And then, whenever you need to get under it, you can give yourself another eight inches of height, which is handy. So, oh, we have no light here. Basically, in here, this is the air tank. Again, it's off the the DAF lorry. I've got a PCL fitting port there. Uh, I think it's a 14 bar blow off valve. The air tank itself, and it's basically being fed from the compressor through an air dryer, which is under here. Get myself wedged in here somewhere. So basically, got the Cummins engine, SAE bell housing onto the ZF box, running a clutch fix HD1 clutch. Um, there's the air assisted slave cylinder over there. Yeah, this thing's bogging, does need a wash underneath, but there's the air assisted slave cylinder there. And then here is Reese Meyer's adapter plate and the LT230 there at the back. Um, did a heavy duty cross pin in that. Not really much else. A couple of custom length drive shafts, obviously. And then there is. The stainless exhaust. If I can get back far enough, you can see basically it comes down passenger side. It's next across, up on that side of the drive shaft, and then up to the front. Front drive shaft's custom length as well. Basically, Reese's kit moves the transfer case back two inches. And there's a couple of spacers there to space the anti-roll bar down. As you can see, it's quite close to the sump. Um, and then I'm running a couple of adrenaline 4x4 uh, front hockey sticks or radius arms, whatever you want to call them. 
Um, that, I believe, is a TD5 cross member. Came with the chassis, so I don't actually know, but that actually works really well. It's quite low and acts as a bit of a sump guard as well. Um, up in there, again, it's very dark, hard to see. There's the air dryer and a couple of electronic valves. It's amusing to run the air operated center diff lock and high low shifter. Um, so, apart from that, it's just standard Land Rover stuff rebuilt. Um, dead straightforward. Most of my work was probably up in this end. Getting the engine mounted, making the exhaust, all that sort of stuff took a lot of time. Anything that was custom fabrication work seems to take a lot longer. There's a set of air horns hanging about up in here as well. He doesn't love air horns. Um, in the back then, made a couple of toolboxes. Um, nothing really fancy. Again, in there there's half a tree. Just basically a toolbox to keep all different bits and pieces in. Need more paint on them too. Um, safety devices, roll cage, um, and that's pretty much it. About a year's work to get it to that stage. Um, easy to talk about in 10 minutes, but sure. That's it. Any questions? Hit them in the comments. Cheers.